In my lifetime, I've witnessed a terrible decline. In yours, you could and should witness a wonderful recovery. That desperate hope, ladies and gentlemen, delicate, excellency, is why the world is looking to you and why you are here. The Climate Conference COP26 in Glasgow this year just started and already during the opening speeches it became pretty obvious. The heads of our governments are well, neglecting a couple of facts. So most of them were patting themselves on the shoulder pretty well for putting some money into public transport, which is great. Some of them were kind of making a big point out of, yeah, we cut down on coal power plants or we plan to do so in the near future. Great stuff. Bottom line is hardly anyone, except for the obvious island nations that are highly depending on the sea, all the others really didn't bother even mentioning the seas. And bottom line is, our oceans are a big part of what makes our climate grow. So, look behind me, the water is, well, not particularly pretty today, but truth also is that the sea is one of the biggest carbon sinks, well, it is the biggest carbon sink that we have on this planet. Meaning that all the carbon we pump into the atmosphere, right now, the majority of it goes into the sea and gets bound there. That again leads to ocean acidification, which comes with a whole long list of problems in itself. So that was one thing that wasn't even mentioned at all. Right now, here where we are in the Mediterranean, the ocean is actually warming up faster than anywhere else in the world. So the Mediterranean this year was the warmest it has ever been. And that, of course, brings with it some of the major climate shifts that we have here, including weather phenomena that we just haven't seen in the Mediterranean Sea ever before. So five years ago, there was the first Medicaid that made headlines around the world. This year, we already had two just here in Sicily. And, well, they are getting more and they are getting stronger. I mean, half of Catania just was swept away by all the rain and it was solid rain for a couple of days now. This is actually the first bit of sunshine we get in a while. So all these things are changing and while a little bit more rain or a little bit of seawater rise doesn't affect us here in the Mediterranean all that much, if you are an island nation like Fiji, like Cook Islands, Solomon Islands, those islands are drowning. So they just lose the habitable ground and eventually have to run. And that's something we are hopefully all trying to avoid. Today, those who've done the least to cause this problem are being the hardest hit. Ultimately, all of us will feel the impact, some of which are now unavoidable. My world is melting. You think you have control, we actually have no control. I'm absolutely terrified. So, all in all, the oceans do need us, and yet, even though we need the oceans as well, we seem to be doing our very best to kick them with everything we got. I mean, look around. It's dirty, we dump so much plastic and waste into it. We have talked about noise pollution in the past. And don't get me wrong, I'm all in favor of plastic. In fact, I'm a big fan of plastic. It is one of the most incredible substances we ever came up with, for the right use. For single use, it's just the wrong material to work with. I mean, it is designed to last forever and it does exactly that and incredibly well. So, yeah, once it's out there, it will stay out there. And yes, there's organizations out there like the Ocean Cleanup that attempt to clean up the world's oceans. But, well, that would be a whole different discussion. Bottom line is, you have to invest a lot of time, a lot of money and a lot of effort into it. And the amount of trash that really gets collected is questionable. Let's just leave it at that. So even just here on this one beach, we collected more than a ton in the last weeks. And that was because of the medicaid we had that was blowing on a lot of crap onto this particular beach. But back to the climate issues, weather getting more severe, winds getting stronger, more unpredictable than ever. And that is even though we have better technology and all of those. And I mean, COVID in many ways was, of course, 
nasty and annoying and pain and all of the above. But it showed us that we can slow down our use of the seas. So shipping traffic went down massively. There was a lot less pollution for a short period of time. I mean, by now our economics are pumped up way beyond what it was pre-COVID and we are spitting out more CO2 than ever before, even though everybody is aware of the issue. And that's what really blows my mind. So a couple of decades ago, we had a good excuse. We could say, yeah, we, we just don't know any better. We are not aware of the issue of climate change. Nobody ever told me about this in school, blah, blah, blah. So we heard all the excuses. Now we have all the knowledge, we have it all right in front of us. And if you are desperate, you can even look it up on the internet and just read up a little bit. But yeah, we simply do not care, it seems. And that's what's really bothering me. Because if you look at it, well, it doesn't really matter which way you look at it. We need a working ecosystem. We need a working climate. We need healthy oceans full of life. We need the fish, we need the biodiversity, we need all of this. It's not that we have to save the planet, it's not that we have to save any particular species. We have to save an environment that is able to sustain us. So every eco-warrior or whatever you want to call these people, it's not doing anything for the greater good, it's making sure that we as a species are able to survive in the future. And that right now, well, we are on a path where that's not entirely certain anymore. We screwed up big time, many times. We continue to do so as of right now. The last climate conference I went to in person was in Copenhagen, Copenhagen at the time. And that was a disaster. I mean, that, that was just a farce and nothing came out of it. We met, met a couple of people made a couple bunch of big promises. A couple of politicians stepped out of the whole scenario again. And this year, Glasgow, Everybody goes there in good faith and everybody goes there and says, oh yeah, we're already doing so much and everybody else should pull along now. But this is just not how it's going to happen. Either we all get our eggs together and we all do the very best we possibly can. And don't wait for everyone else to catch up. Because, let's face it, we can't wait for the slowest person, for the slowest country, for the slowest government to come up with the best possible solutions we have to start working our private personal solutions right now. It doesn't matter on what scale, is it, if, if it's a government, if it's a private person, we all have to do the very best we can right now. And that's what it boils down to. So, if you have kids, you want to have kids, if you want to make sure that you will be able to survive in the future, well, the time to act is right now. And honestly, an idea that would kill me is that a couple of years from now, my kids walk up to me and ask me, so you knew all this was happening. You knew that lots of things are going down the drain. So what did you do when you found out? And right now, at least I can say, I tried everything I could. Can we fix climate problem in one generation? My answer would be yes. We have to. We need to not just to talk about what we can do, but to do what we can. This is a challenge that we should try to solve in a quick way with a long-term vision.